South Africa is a sport-loving nation and Johannesburg is its largest city. So if you put two and two together, this city should have plenty of sports venues. Here are the stadiums and arenas of Johannesburg, South Africa. Dobsonville Stadium. We start off with a stadium that is reminiscent of some of the snakes that you can find in the area. A snouted cobra, for instance. The stadium is a different color, of course, and slightly larger, so it shouldn't startle you too much if you stumble upon it. Anyway, it's home to one of three premiership clubs in the city, the Morocco Swallows. They're the only one that isn't playing in a former World Cup stadium. FNB Stadium, or the Calabash as it's affectionately known, owing to its resemblance to a Calabash pot, has been featured on the channel several times now. At least one of those times was due to it being the largest stadium on the continent. It technically opened in 1989, but was almost completely rebuilt just prior to the 2010 World Cup, where it hosted the final. I would tell you the result, but all I remember is the sound of those vuvuzelas. Anyway, this is an incredible stadium, although I kind of wish they had a variety of colors inside, just like the exterior. The Wanderers is the home of cricket in Johannesburg. Every international match that takes place in the city takes place here, and for good reason. As well as being the largest cricket stadium in Africa, it's known for having one of the most hostile atmospheres in cricket. As for the design, well, it's kinda interesting. There's basically every type of seating you could want. Most of the capacity is coming from molded plastic seats, but there's a grass hill, a grass terrace, a rickety looking metal stand or two. What more could you want? We buy Cars Dome. This was once a world class sporting and music venue, but it was recently sold to a company called We. Oi, f off. I'm Johan van Belt from We Buy Cars. We bought this big ass dome and filled it with like a thousand cars. I'm not even joking. There are so many cars that we bought because we buy cars, that's what we do. Nobody can use this place now, but you can come and also buy cars if you want. We buy cars. Hashtag not spawn. Where do these people come from? Orlando Stadium. In order of Orlando notoriety worldwide, I think it goes Orlando, Florida, Orlando Bloom, and then Orlando. The township in the Johannesburg Metropolitan Municipality. But Orlando Bloom doesn't have a stadium anywhere near as good as this. Just like FNB Stadium, it was rebuilt prior to the World Cup. I find it kind of interesting that this is home to a club called the Orlando Pirates. Because Johannesburg is an inland city. So I can only assume these guys were burning DVDs back in the day when they got their name. Then again, Pittsburgh is also an inland city. UJ Stadium. If OJ is orange juice, then UJ must be... University of Johannesburg, of course. These days, this is primarily an athletics and rugby facility. However, it was used as a training facility during the World Cup. Although it is in one of Africa's biggest cities, it's actually situated in a pretty serene setting on the Auckland Park campus. Squozen between two dams and surrounded by trees. Yeah, nice place. Alexandra Stadium is situated in a completely different locale. In fact, the area is considered to be a slum. This is a city of stark contrasts. As you might expect, the stadium doesn't have top-notch amenities, not even close. The capacity is mostly coming from people sitting on concrete steps. But there is a spattering of plastic seats and they're all under the cover of a roof, so if you get in early and sit there, it's pretty much indistinguishable from FNB Stadium, basically. Alice Park is probably the most iconic rugby stadium in South Africa. It hosted the famous 1995 World Cup Final, where Matt Damon travelled back in time, put on a South African accent, learned how to play rugby, and led the Springboks to victory. But not without some motivational words from Morgan Freeman along the way. In all seriousness though, that was the stadium's high point. 
Its low point followed just six years later in 2001, when it was the site of the worst stadium disaster in the country's history. 43 people were killed in the stampede. Next door we have Alice Park Arena, a venue that is perhaps most well known for hosting the annual Johannesburg ATP Tennis Tournament. But as you can see here, it also hosted an NBA Africa event. The first NBA game in Africa. I guess now it's technically the largest indoor sports arena in the city, given that the other is now a car showroom. And for a city as big as Johannesburg, that's quite surprising. In the same complex we have Johannesburg Stadium, which is the city's premier track and field facility. It's not surprising that there's no footballing tenant, given that there are at least four rectangular stadiums in the city of equal or better quality. The design is one that is quite common amongst athletic stadiums. In particular, the asymmetrical bowl layout with a sweeping roof covering the larger side. Looks good, but as you can see, it's not in the best condition nowadays. Rand Stadium Wow, in 1951 you could build an entire stadium for just one rand. That's inflation for you, you can't even buy a bag of chips with one rand nowadays. Now South Africa was using the pound back then, not the rand. Just one of the reasons that joke doesn't work. The other being, it's not good. Anyway, this is another fairly impressive stadium that doesn't have a permanent tenant. It's used as a training base by the Orlando Pirates, and host the occasional game as a neutral venue. Those were the stadiums and arenas of Johannesburg. Consider subscribing if you're new and as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.